Hello guys, we're back on the eve of the largest event in Azure Lane for the year, the anniversary. Leading up to this event, we've had a few weeks of relaxation, a little bit, but there's been some changes and I wanted to cover those today. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the minor updates you may have missed between now and the last major event, data mine. And this will be a good prelude to leading up to this next major event, which will be dropping next week. There have already been some spoilers. We have this skin. We know it's very likely going to be an IJN event based on the prelude event. But if you want to be there while they live announce the next event and all the new ships in it, please join my live stream. This whole weekend is going to be an Azure Lane celebration with 16 hours of streaming over two days, kind of three if you're actually in the US based on time zones, but we'll just say two days. And I hope I can see you there for just even a little bit if you can make it into your schedule. So let's talk about the Wentz Flowers Bear No Fruit event. Hopefully you've been playing this event a lot since it came out. As part of this event, a new ship dropped, which was actually to my surprise, given that there is a big UR event coming just a couple weeks later from when they dropped this event. It is only one ship, but I was surprised that they would have something that you can get in the gotcha. To their credit though, this ship is also available by collecting 10,000 event points. It's actually a little bit harder than usual for this type of event because there's less missions to get those points easier. However, you should be able to get those 10,000 points hopefully before next week. And if you do, you can get this ship for free. Don't spend cubes on this ship as we have a UR event coming. I repeat, do not spend cubes to try and get this ship. Just play the dang event. So let's talk about this ship. This is an SR ship that got released. So that's cool. It's IGN Zuhao. Zuhao is a light carrier. I know, I know, but let's take a look at her. She has very low HP. In fact, she has the lowest HP of any SR backliner that isn't a retrofit. The lowest SR backliner, I guess, technically is now Chenhai retrofit, but... If we're talking about base pre-retrofit, she has the lowest HP of any backliner at the SR rarity. In fact, all her stats are pretty lackluster, but we don't use light carriers for stats, so let's go into the skills. When this ship launches an airstrike, do all of the following. Number one, heal three times over three seconds. That's one time a second. The first two times, it targets the lowest HP Vanguard ship. The third time, it targets a random one. Interesting. Each heal restores 5% of Zuho's max HP to the target. That would make sense why her HP is so low, because it actually is targeting her HP. Her HP is still higher than a lot of Vanguard's HP, so this is going to be really, really good for destroyers in the Vanguard. It's actually a really powerful heal. That's 15% heal, but unfortunately it's single targeted, so it's not going to be something like Unicorn that just does the whole thing, but it's good. Additionally, she's going to heal three times over three seconds the target in the main fleet with the lowest HP. This is going to target the same person. There's no like random time the third time. It's 2% of the target's HP. That's actually better because the likelihood that the target is going to have higher HP than she does is pretty much almost guaranteed. So she's going to be healing more by using their HP. So both pretty good. Additionally, every 10 seconds after the start of the battle, she's going to trigger a special aerial barrage. This is a great heal skill all across the board. It doesn't heal everybody, but it does heal the important targets. It heals them a lot and it allows you to kind of gimmick with her equipment to give her more HP. I like this skill a lot. Skill number two, all submarine fleet ships get 10% extra damage dealt and minus 20% damage taken. Submarine fleet really doesn't matter in most cases, especially the damage taken. But if you do need that, we can make our submarine fleet more powerful by a good amount. When the ship's airstrike finishes loading, she gives plus 8% damage dealt for 8 seconds to the main fleet. That is very good. That is pretty relevant. She's going to load that up. And given that she's a light carrier, that should actually be you know, coming up fast. So that's actually very relevant. Her Both her skills are great. She's only got two skills. She's got a lot of utility here. I could see her being useful in late game PVE worlds like World 14, World 15, things like that, because she gives, you know, the ACV value that you need. She has some benefits from submarines, which you might be bringing in there. You are also going to put her in a mob fleet, which are going to run out of ammo and do so many battles that you're going to need heals. Her heals are going to be targeted. You can play around with a bunch of things. So I, overall, this is a pretty good ship. For a, a ship that's coming as a, basically a free ship two weeks before the biggest event of the year, this is this is a good ship. And 
and I would recommend that you make sure you pick it up. So with that, let's move on to the update that happened yesterday. There's a mini event, A Cleft to Paradise, that's going to give you a free skin for Mootski. Whence the Dust Settles is a mini event that will give you a gear skin as a reward. It's going to be another mask, so we're still on theme with that. Also, the Call to Arms is here, which gives XP bonuses to Shinano, Amagi, Akagi, Nagato, and Kasumi. Guess what? Big shocker, the next UR event is very likely going to be IJN. We also got the newest meta ship for Operation Siren. This is going to be Nagato, still going with the IJN theme here. She got her meta version before Retrofit. Kind of sad, but okay, we'll take it. It's at least another meta battleship. We don't have a lot of those. They're also adding Queen Elizabeth meta to the Dossier, so that should be nice for people who didn't get her. The meta fight is going to be obviously against Nagato. She's a heavy armor battleship with a lot of firepower. Her mechanic is kind of interesting. During the battle, she's going to switch between Waning Moon and Waxing Moon every 15 seconds. When she is in Waxing Moon, she's going to deal 20% more damage and heal 100% more more. When she's in waning mood, she's going to deal 20% less damage and ships are going to be healed less. Also, she's going to have a boundary appear and it's going to have its effect vary by the moon phase that she's in. When she's in waxing mood, the enemies or her friendly ships are going to take less damage. When she's in waning mood, friendly ships, which are your enemies, are going to lose more HP. So basically, you got to do all of your damage within the waning moon section of Nagato. This should hopefully be a little bit easier, but you're going to have to make sure your you know, shots are timed properly. So it's Shouldn't be too hard of a mechanic, just make sure your timing is lined up. So your reward for fighting this battle over and over again is going to be Nagato Meta. Her stats are nearly identical to her base version, which at the time Nagato released was pretty good, now not so much. A little bit more firepower than the base version, a little bit less HP, so a little bit more aggro, but more or less the same. Skill number one, she's going to get a flat 15% boost to firepower and hit stat, that's great. Then for each IJN ship in the fleet, she doesn't count as an IJN because she's a meta version, and this stacks a max two times, she's going to get an additional 5% firepower and hit stat. So theoretically, if you put two IJN ships with her, you're going to get 25% firepower and 25% hit stat. That is awesome. That is a lot of damage there. It's kind of funny that it's not meta ships, it's IJN ships. It goes with this theme as we're going into this IJN event, but I was kind of hoping that she would be themed with the meta versions, not her old faction. Anyway, that's a great buff. Fantastic. When an IJN ship takes 25% of their max HP worth of damage, they're going to gain a 5% of HP barrier for 6 seconds. This triggers once per battle per ship. So if you have all of your ships are IJN, each of them will get to trigger this shield. So it's an extra shield that happens. It actually happens pretty early at that 75% health mark, which is cool. It actually doesn't incorporate basically heals. So if you are, let's say, down at 80% of HP, but you've healed 5%, this is worded so that it would actually still trigger. So, you know, typically it says when you reach the 20, 20, or when you reach 75% HP, then it triggers. This actually says when you accumulate that damage, which means that you can actually just like go down the 90% and heal back up. But if you do that three times, you would have taken 25% of that damage. So this is an interesting trigger. Haven't seen one of these really yet in the game. And it's cool. And it's actually just better than having to hit a strict marker. It's also not a lot. 25% damage is something that you can definitely do, especially even in a mob fleet as you go through multiple battles. And it just gives you the shields. Great. So this sh first skill basically just says that she should be in an IJN fleet. Uh, which is obviously where the original Nagato is. You would put her in a full IJN fleet. Kind of interesting here. I was hoping this would say meta ship. Like really, if they swapped out IJN here for meta ship, I'd be kind of happy with this. Uh, it just feels weird that it's a meta ship, but it's, and it's not even an IJN ship itself technically. And it's, you know, trying to be a faction leader for it. Anyway, let's move on to skill number two. At the start of the battle, randomly give a full moon to a vanguard ship. Ships with full moon buff gain 10% firepower torpedo stat, and when that ship is healed from any source, it gains an additional 1% heal. The full moon buff is then reassigned to a random vanguard ship. It looks like it can also be randomly assigned back to the same ship. So basically, when you take those heals, you are going to switch the full moon and also get a buff there. The first skill is actually not healing. It's giving a shield, so not necessarily going to trigger this. But if you have another heal, 
like let's just say the other healing ship we just talked about which is also coincidentally ijn then this would you know trigger gives you a boost so it's a boost healer i like that we don't see a ton of those so that's really cool move on to skill number three when this ship fires her main gun you trigger a special barrage the barrage is randomly picked between two options that scale on the skill level they're both he oriented so this is going to be good against light armor if there are no ijn ships in the fleet you enhance the barrage of course <sighs> Okay, so this is like so, and then there's uh, the smoldering core that's going to be her type, and then she's going to get her like basic operation siren bonus that she gets she takes eight percent less damage so all right that's pretty standard um there's so many things i like about this ship but i would just tweak a little bit the first thing i tweak is instead of being ign i'd replace any instance of ign with an instance of meta ship i'd also want to make the barrier a heal so that it triggers the second skill and you don't need to run a healer to trigger it but you need to do that and then also the third skill is just i mean it's a barrage but it's weird i mean it's fine because you're just gonna get extra damage they're gonna put extra burn but there's like three different barrage options that you have here it randomly picks between the two so you don't know which one's gonna happen and then you now get a bonus if you don't use the ships that you want to use in the first skill ah it, it it that last one i just like i don't know the enhancement on that is something you're not really gonna want to do most of the time so i don't know this ship is interesting it had a lot of the key makings of being a really interesting like meta fleet ship but a little disappointed in the in the in the details devil's in the details sometimes and that's what i'd say with this but we're in the right direction i like some of the new things they're doing the full moon effect is cool and uh, definitely the accumulating damage irregardless of heals is also really cool so overall a good ship though it's definitely a lot better than most of the meta ships that we've gotten especially in the backliner and we probably will use this until we get a better backliner because you know, the meta ships struggle in the back line. Actually, they just struggle in general, other than a few notable exceptions, like Jinsu meta, which is just kind of a busted ship. But for the most part, they struggle, and, and so this will be a, a nice added addition. We don't have a lot of good battleships in the meta factions. All right, last but not least, we have another update about augment modules. There's actually five coming, a ton of them. We got Ibiki, Dunkirk, Tashkent, Shiranui, and Exeter. So we'll quickly go over those. Dunkirk gets firepower and reload, then she increases increases her chances to fire her barrage. Then you're going to create all of these desserts, donuts, Mont Blanc, macaroons, and basically they all have different effects. Doesn't make her good, but it definitely makes her the food queen. So if you like Dunkirk, yeah, use that. We actually have some decent French battleships now, so probably don't need Dunkirk, but it's nice for her to get some love and support after all these years. Tashkent is going to get firepower and HP. Those are the things we want on a firepower destroyer there. And then also she's going to lose her restriction for the main gun, which is great. She gets a slash too. That's nice. And then she is going to basically get double amount of damage from her blue cruiser. That's really nice. And she's going to get 4% boost to evasion rate tashkent gets a really big buff here i mean there's some really strong ur destroyers now but tashkent used to be really good especially when she dropped she's obviously been power crept but this is a really good bonus here and especially not having a main gun restriction allows her to use all the goodies that have been released since and we love her blue cruiser bonus so this is actually a good one tashkent actually gets super usable shiranui was never good she gets torpedo and hit stat at the start of battle she gets you know extra crit damage for her torpedoes and she triggers a special barrage so anyway she's still bad there's no no real good change here exeter another ship that's really bad she gets firepower and hit stat she stays pretty squishy although she gets a skill when she loses half of her hp she gets extra firepower i just rather have the slash to be honest with you she now has an upgraded barrage that's going to trigger at the start of the battle and it's also going to allow her to get armor break if it hits the enemy four times the same enemy four times for six seconds, not good. She's still terrible. Moving on, last but not least, Ibiki. She actually looks pretty good. She gets torpedo and evasion stat. Those are things that you really want in a torpedo heavy cruiser. She gets a slash, so that's going to help with her EHP. Great. And we get a boost. When she fires her torpedoes, 
a hundred percent chance we're guaranteeing this barrage it's an enhanced torpedo barrage that basically doubles damage and then after she launches this barrage she goes invincible for 1.5 seconds so basically she's going to fire her torpedoes then she's going to have a enhanced special torpedo barrage and then she's going to go invincible great we like this really good for ehp and remind her that she's going to have double preloaded torpedoes she was the first ship to have double preloaded torpedoes so really you get this barrage twice right at the beginning and then you also go invincible for uh, this is going to be a lot of hecticness i'm curious to see like how that affects like on screen things she's also getting this augment module as a pr ship so that's actually really good precedent really good news interesting that we see that so you can hold up hopes for some of those pr ships that are really bad even after their fate simulation they might get an augment module like this ibiki's augment module is pretty good you know it's not going to bring her up to the new unzen so to speak but it does make her pretty relevant does make her bulkier and i do like this a lot there's a lot of benefits to this augment this would probably be the winner of this whole thing is this augment module on ibiki so with that we've covered basically all of the new ships and new content that's changing to the ships we're also getting a blueprint completion event for plymouth so that can help you get extra plates uh i think the last thing event wise is we're going to be getting a module development development emergency so you can do that every day and get some rewards yeah that's basically all the news until we have the live stream that is coming out i hope to see you guys there it should hopefully be a lot of fun thank you guys for watching take care and i'll see you guys soon